Hey, I'm Bryson with Trick Tools, and this is our Mech Hammer Mark II Planishing Hammer. And I'm gonna show you guys the details of what makes this one of the most unique planishing hammers on the market. To point out some of the key features of this machine that make it a unique planishing hammer, uh, we're gonna start up here with the electric motor. So uh, it plugs into one 10 volt power, uh, which makes it real nice. So you can plug it in anywhere in your shop. Uh, if you've got a small shop, big shop, you don't have to be using air power uh, to be able to run the planishing hammer. So um, this electric motor uses a clutch style system. So the harder you push on the foot pedal, the more it uh, engages the clutch, which in, the, uh, in turn uh, spins the belt, which turns the air motor uh, faster all the way from zero up to 3,000 beats per minute. So um, from there, uh, the cool thing about this machine is that when you go to put dies in it, uh, you don't have to worry about applying more pressure uh, with your foot to the dies. You can just, once you pop the dies in there and they're in place, you get the spring pressure here that is always applying that little bit of pressure to the dies uh, and keeps them always together. So essentially uh, when you are activating the motor, all you're doing is changing the speed uh, in which the air motor is working. So uh, it's the set it and forget it uh, system on this machine that makes it real easy to use. So uh, from there, there's different weights that you can put inside the hammerhead here. Uh, if you're Doing some light gauge aluminum, uh, you can put the real lightweight in there. If you're going all the way up to like a 16 gauge steel, uh, you can go with the heavyweight uh, and then in between, uh, depending on what your project is and what material you're working with. So, um, like I said, it's a foot pedal control. It allows you to stand easily on two feet, control it with your toe. You can hold your material here uh, and easily be able to operate the machine without having to worry about balancing or um, you know, not being in a comfortable position to be able to work on your material. So uh, it's got the two different arms here. Uh, obviously this arm here would be if you have a, a fender or some other big part that has a lot of shape, um, gives you the capabilities to be able to get up inside of a part uh, and that sort of thing. Or you can swing it out of the way and you have just the upper arm here, which uh, this uh, piece here extends out. And then that allows you to uh, do a couple different things with some of the die sets uh, and get in some real tight spots uh, on you know a, a small part and that sort of thing. So um, pretty neat capabilities with the dual arm setup. Uh, it really allows you to have a lot of versatility uh, and use the same machine for a lot of different projects. So um, now we're going to talk about the dies that it comes with and uh, show you guys what the tooling options are. Other than the mechanical functions of the machine that make this a very unique planishing hammer, uh, the tooling is what really sets this machine apart. So there's a lot of different options here. So um, when you buy the machine, the base machine package comes with the one upper die and a three 12 and 36 inch regular planishing die. And then from there, all the tooling can be added on or we have a master deluxe package that comes with all of the tooling. So uh, to explain some of this tooling, we have an additional 14 piece, piece planishing set. Uh, it's gonna come with two different uh, reverse curve upper dies to go in the machine. And then it's gonna give you the 12 other uh, different radiuses to go uh, in the machine for different planishing tasks. Everything from five eighths, you get three quarters, seven eighths, one inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, two inch, four inch, six inch, 24, 40, and then a totally flat uh, die to complete your set. So um, gives you a lot of regular planishing capabilities uh, in that die package there. So uh, from there we have a double crown uh, square set. So they're, what it means by the double crown, you got a radius uh, this way and then also a slight radius the other way. So, uh, and each one of these has slightly different uh, radius cut into the dies themselves uh, to be able to get into the different types of panels that you're trying to shape. Uh, from there, we have a set of beading tooling, uh, which is pretty unique. So uh, I'll get to these phenolic uppers here in a second, but uh, to show you the uh, what the beading dies do, you have the holder here, so you can swap out these little discs uh, that go uh, here. And this is the upper die, so that puts your bead uh, hammering down. Uh, we have everything from an 
eight millimeter, 12, 16, and 20 millimeter bead size uh, there. So, and then the lower section is this little kind of square block with the different sizes cut into it. Uh, and you can do different things uh, with these. So you can obviously uh, run your bead uh, this way and then when you get to the end of your beads you can actually rotate these around and I'll uh, show this off in a minute you can rotate these around uh, and hammer around on the edge like this to be able to complete and round off the end of your bead so um, we'll go through that here in a couple minutes but uh, so to continue on from there uh, we have an edge tipping die that's cut at an angle uh, gives you a couple of different uh, ways to do some edge tipping uh, without putting a lot of hammering marks in your material and that sort of thing. Uh, we have a, another square die here uh, that basically uh, is flat one direction and just has a radius cut in the other direction. We have this other square set, which this one uh, is completely flat with real sharp edges all the way around. This one has, uh, it's flat with a little bit more radius cut around on the edges here and then the other one here is flat with even more radius cut on the corners uh, to be able to get into different corner shapes uh, and any hard breaks that you might have in your panel. So uh, from there we have a set of small upper dies um, that really allow you to get into some really tight spots, um, kind of more of in a reverse curve type scenario or if you've got something that you're trying to put a lot of shape in, um, you know, a, a real tight radius from the bottom, uh, you can hammer with those. Uh, allows you to get uh, get in real tight uh, on there. So these are uppers. We have a set of uh, two linear stretch dies that gives you a really hard linear stretch or a softer linear stretch, uh, depending on what you're looking for there. So uh, these phenolic upper dies um, basically gives you the ability to do some softer hammering uh, for some more metal movement instead of stretching necessarily. So there's a set of two uppers there, kind of a reverse curve and a flat. Uh, this 22 millimeter set is just a small set, so there's an upper and a lower, and they're both flat, and it allows you to get into some real tight areas, uh, depending on you know what part you're making. So um, we do have a set of thumbnail dies, and I'll explain how those work on this machine. Um, gives you that thumbnail shrinking capability, which you pretty much don't get with any, with any other type of planishing hammer. So from there, uh, the last set would be all of this edge tipping set. So uh, you have your different holders here and then you have these different size discs that give you different flange widths so in the machine you'd place the disc there on the upper you place the other disc on the lower and then these go together and then whatever the gap is in your material uh, for your material you can slide in there and it automatically gives you a fence to ride on here so the width of the disc here is basically how big your flange is gonna be. So we have 12 millimeter, 10 millimeter, eight millimeter, and six millimeter uh, to give you some different flange widths on there. So that's a pretty unique die set and uh, we'll show off how those work as well. So um, that completes all the tooling uh, for the mech hammer here. Um, like I said, a really broad selection of tooling that gives you a lot of really good uh, and awesome planishing and hammering capabilities with this planishing hammer that you don't get with any other machine on the market. Before we show you the planishing capabilities of this machine, uh, I wanted to talk through real quick, something I mentioned earlier was the replaceable weights that you can put inside the air motor. So it comes with a standard weight, uh, which would kind of be right in the middle here. Uh, we have a heavy weight, if you're gonna be doing a lot of maybe 16 gauge steel, uh, that sort of thing, you can put the heavier weight in there, it's gonna give you that heavier hammering capacity to be able to get your shaping done a little quicker. Then we have a lighter weight uh, one, and these ones are, uh, you know, these are made out of steel. Uh, that gives you that, uh, that heavier weight capacity. If you're gonna be doing some, maybe some real light gauge aluminum and you want some real fine uh, planishing capability that's gonna allow you to uh, really fine tune in a panel uh, and not uh, beat it to death uh, by using heavier weight, we have this aluminum uh, ultra light weight that you can put inside the air motor that gives you that real fine uh, planishing capability, so. So a quick explanation on the weight change on the motor here first before we get going. Uh, there's a set screw uh, in the back here which holds the die holder in place. Uh, so you wanna go ahead and take that set screw out of here. So 
So you can take the die holder out. And what you want to do, uh, we'll go ahead and start the machine up here. There's an on off switch on this side. And uh, that's the machine running, uh, the motor's running at full speed. And uh, basically, to pop this weight out of here, you got to make sure that the set screw is backed out enough. And then uh, basically, you just want to bump the pedal and it forces the weight uh, out of the hammer. So uh, you wanna make sure that this weight uh, just has a little bit of lubrication on it to keep it from sticking inside the hammer head, but you also wanna make sure that it doesn't have too much oil, which will also cause it to stick uh, inside. So there's already a little bit of oil on there, so I'm probably not gonna oil it up uh, very much, but what you wanna do, so we provide you with uh, some air lubricant and uh, you get the little application bottle and so you want to on the back side of the machine of the hammerhead here there's uh, two holes and that's where the air is sucked in and also uh, forced out of the head so you just want to put a couple drops of oil uh, in there just enough to keep this lubricated and then you can pop that back in there pop your holder back in here and there's a to show you guys too, there's a there's a groove on the back side of the die holder, uh, which is where that set screw uh, gets placed in here. So make sure it's lined up with that set screw. Tighten that back down. Doesn't have to be crazy tight, just nice and snug in place. So uh, once you get that done, and uh, I do like to put a little bit of oil on the O-ring on the upper die. Just helps uh, with insulation and removal. So get a little bit of oil on there. And then pop that up in place in that upper, upper die holder. And then uh, swing your whichever arm you want to use back in place. Line up your tooling and you can get to work. So now we'll officially start operating this machine and showing you guys all the unique uh, hammering capabilities that it has and uh, some of the things that really dial this machine in as one of the top options for a uh, multi-use machine in your shop. So currently we have the standard uh, upper die in here and we have a th uh, three inch radius lower die just to show off some of the planishing capabilities. So uh, the standard, uh, the weight that it comes with, uh, with the machine is in the motor right now. So uh, this is some 063 aluminum. Uh, so we'll go ahead and show you. Basically you can stand uh, on two feet uh, in a nice comfortable position, and then you can use your toe for control on the machine. So uh, it allows you to get uh, some light tapping uh, and then you can easily speed it up just by applying some pressure uh, with your toes. So, um, but it allows you to stand in a comfortable position to where you can hold your part uh, and you're not trying to do a balancing act while you're operating the machine. So, So you can see uh, the planishing uh, is pretty easy to control uh, you know, with the foot option and uh, really gives you the capabilities with the weights to be able to dial in the machine for what you're hammering on. Um, this being a little bit thicker aluminum, the standard weight's a pretty good option. Uh, or if I was really looking to do some really fine finish planishing to really smooth out the surface, I could drop down to a lighter weight uh, and continue planishing from there. So. 
Uh, we're gonna switch dies now and show you guys some of the other capabilities. So with the thumbnail dies here, uh, you know, unlike a pull max or a power hammer, uh, with the thumbnail dies on these, it's it's really not the best practice to go really deep into a panel, um, just because of the planishing action. The dies are always in contact, so you end up doing uh, stretching as well. So uh, really, these work great, kind of right on the edge of a panel, gives you a uh, little bit of thumbnail that you're looking for to be able to curl a panel over. Uh, and really bring a lot more shape right into an edge. So uh, I'll show you how that works here.
so now we're gonna be swapping over to our beading dies, I'll show you guys how those work. But in order to do that, uh, this is the insert for the upper arm that is required for the beading dies. So to swap that out, you just have a Allen bolt in here that you remove. You can slide this die holder out, slide the beading die holder in and put your bolt back in. So uh, basically what you do here is you get that in, you leave it a little loose, and then this will slide in and out so you can get it lined up with your tooling. So we'll go ahead and put that tooling on and get it all lined up and show you some beading action. Uh, so I was trying to just do this flange on this 18 gauge steel uh, with the standard weight in here, um, but it, I don't think it was quite heavy, heavy enough to really uh, get done what I was trying to do. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and swap out to the heavier weight on this, show you guys how that's done and uh, see if we can get this flange uh, to bend over further for us. So.
So as you can see uh, with the Mech Hammer Mark II, uh, it really gives you a lot of capabilities, uh, things you can do with a planishing hammer that you normally can't do with a planishing hammer. So for more information on the Mech Hammer Mark II, visit our website at tricktools.com. If you have any questions at all, give us a call and we'll try to answer uh, whatever questions you may have. So uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos on high performance tools for the fabricator.